Hello friends and welcome to the Great Awakening Within series. In this week's video I'm going to share ways in which you can bring light to your unconscious aspects of yourselves so that we can have this Great Awakening Within. And I really feel with every part of my body that this is the most important work that we can be doing in this transitional time in humanity. And it's not sexy work, there's no aliens or galactic codes, but one thing that you will find is you will find your own source code and eventually, hopefully, you will become an unprogrammed human and you will have your own algorithm and you won't be working from the algorithm of the collective mind, you'll be working from the algorithm of your true sovereign self. So before I share with you the seven ways of identifying your shadow, I just want to talk for a moment about why people shy away from doing shadow work or from, from really addressing the unconscious. And it's probably the same reason why people don't go to the gym. It's hard work, it's not easy, it's not an instant fix. It's not you do one session and you're cured. It is hard work, but it is extremely rewarding. It is like taking your soul for a workout. And I think over the last few decades, there's been this real um, trend um, towards the new age and this egregore of the new age has, has grown hugely, which has, which I kind of think is from um, a variety of religious programs and they've, it's kind of come together in this kind of distorted teachings of that everything is light and everything is bliss and just follow your bliss. And really you're following kind of the, the wrong direction because the thing that you need to be really following and getting really curious about is the hidden that is inside of you and this is the true great awakening the true great awakening lives inside of you i know we a lot many of us will focus on the things that are in the external matrix but the matrix of belief inside of you is where the real true great awakening will happen in and this is a wonderful place you know the the shadow is a a, a great place it's the great unknown it has a huge amount of mystery in it if we think about where things are birthed from, we're birthed from the dark, seeds grow underground. So visions and ideas, this is where they come from. So for us to run away from, from that is to run away from our, our essence in a way. And for me, that is the most important thing that we can embody in this, in this time of transition. Like I said earlier, this is the most important work that we can do. And it is very rewarding. You'll find your potential here. You won't find your potential chasing, um, I don't know, Lemurian or Acturian codes. You will find it by really, really being inside of yourself. This is what all the great mystics and great philosophers have spoken about and speak to throughout times. And they weren't wrong. It's really everything is within. And when you have that kind of when you really start to understand that in your body, it's a huge responsibility. It's a huge responsibility to know that everything that you need is inside of you and is on the other side of your fear and your trauma and your programming and your conditioning. It's a huge responsibility. So that is probably why many people run away from it and shy away from it. And it's not something that's sexy. There's nothing sexy about it. In fact, it can be, um, yeah, it can, be quite, it can be quite, you know, I've had sessions where where I've had gone really deep into myself, into my agendas, and I'll speak about those in a moment, but one of the ways of looking at your shadow is looking at your agendas, and when you really start to begin to understand why you're doing the things that you're doing and the agendas that you have, oof, you have to... Um, you have to face some really difficult truths about yourself. So it is the work of warriors. It really is the work of warriors. So um, yeah, with that being said, let's look at how we can how we can look at our shadow. Okay, so the shadow doesn't just announce itself. It doesn't, you know, your shame is not just going to come in or your fear is not going to co just come in and say, hey, I'm fear, I'm here for you to work with me. It's going to show it, it's going to appear in your life in, in kind of mysterious ways. It's hidden, right? So it will show itself in symptoms and the shadow will also show itself in symbols as well. 
So this is, for me, this is really where you can start to mind your inner gold. And that's what I'll share this slide with you now. That's why I've put these pots of gold at the bottom of this slide. And that's why there's seven circles as well, because these are really portals for you to mind your inner gold. But to mind your inner gold, you have to, and to have this great awakening within, you have to become like a stalker or a detective to yourself. And you have to get really curious as to why you're doing the things that you're doing. So the first thing to look out for when you're when you're looking for these unconscious behaviors and parts and patterns and programs is your behaviors. So toxic behavior traits, behaviors that are perhaps not for the good of your inner realm and not for the good of your family and friends. Really, if you can, check yourself before you wreck yourself and get curious as to why you're behaving the way that you are. Number two is agendas. You know, we all speak about the, the narrative that the collective has, but what about our individual agendas? Why are we doing the things that we're doing? Are we doing the things that we're doing for attention, for manipulation? Are we doing it to play the victim? There are many, many ways why we will have agendas. So we get really curious as to what your intentions are. And if you can, start to live intentionally. Start to set your intentions from a solid place within your soul rather than from one of the many eyes. So if you remember in last week's video where I spoke, where I shared the quote from Gurdjieff where he talks about man not having a, a big eye but many singular eyes and all those different characters in, that, in the image that I shared, which I'll share now, all those different characters inside that man's head they all have their own agendas and own wills and what our work is to do, our work as, as people that are here to do real light work is to face, face unconscious agendas and to, face, and to face why these aspects of ourselves are doing the things that they're doing and then to get them into some kind of leadership. Okay, so number three is coping mechanisms and habits. So this really is kind of the realm of addictions it's, it's where firefighters live, for those of you that don't know what firefighters are. When you have, inside the inner world, there are, there are protectors and there are exiles or vulnerable parts of ourselves. So the protectors protect the vulnerable aspects of ourselves. So if a vulnerable aspect of ourselves gets aggravated inside our, our internal system, um, so for instance, shame or rage comes up, Often a firefighter will come in to soothe the system. So it will use things like drugs, alcohol, overspending, overeating, uh, distraction, spiritual bypassing. It'll use a whole host of coping mechanisms so that this shame or rage or fear or whatever it is, this really deep vulnerable aspect of ourselves doesn't take over your, your consciousness because if it did, there might be... Um, you know, all these parts are working for the for you, not against you. So that part, when it when you are in um, an addictive kind of cycle, it's doing that because it believes that it's protecting this really vulnerable aspect of you. And if that vulnerable aspect was to show itself in the everyday world, you might be in danger and unsafe. So something that your conscious mind might think, oh my God, why the hell am I doing the things that I'm doing? Your unconscious will actually be thinking we need to do this we need to do this to stay to stay safe and then also in this portal is habits I, I think the word habits is really interesting if you think about habitat our habitat is where we live so our habits are forming the life that we have so if you can really stalk what your habits are and the choices that you make you know your, your habits are your choice points and when you make choices you then create a reality Okay, number four is our emotional and mental state. So when I spoke about those, all those different characters inside the inner internal inner world in the inner landscape, some of those um, characters sometimes can get in a very heightened emotional state, or some of those characters, some of those many eyes, might get into mental thought loops. And the work for you to do when you're in this portal is to, if you can, it can be quite hard, especially if we're over emotional, it can be quite difficult to do this. But if you can, ask the emotion or the thought loop to take a step back. 
just to take a step back and to give you some space and get curious with with it get curious as to why why is it behaving the way that it is why is it feeling sorry why is it feeling the way that it is or why is it thinking the way that it is why why is it in this thought pattern or this thought loop and then when you do that you'll start to bring light and awareness to some darker aspects of yourself and then you'll have this great awakening within number five is projections and triggers now this this little portal here is a great realm um, social media is a great realm for do for doing this work this is where you can use social media for shadow work so think about um, where you get where you um, get triggered on social media and also where you project so we'll start with projections so for those of you that don't know a projection is something that you can own inside of yourself so you project out onto the outer reality now many times people think that it's it's only um sort of unhelpful things or, or darker traits that we can't own about ourselves but that's not true it's also our potential so if you you are idolizing somebody on social media or are in real life there is also a real life in this in this world um but if you idolize somebody or, or you think wow they're they're they've you know they're great they're, they're wonderful i wish i was like them get curious to to the, the aspect of you that wishes you were like them because it's probably lying in your shadow and it's what's called the golden shadow and it's pro you're probably projecting something that is inside of you that exists in another person but you just can't own it yet and then triggers you know get curious with your triggers why do you feel triggers triggered which part of you feels triggered why do they feel that way what are they trying to protect you from remember those protectors and those vulnerable aspects and then number six is what i was speaking um, about in last week's video and it's the realm of fantasy so in last week's video i went over the five initiatory steps that john baines in the stellar man recommends and one of those steps is is fantasy to stop fantasizing and people can have all sorts of fantasies about themselves you know about other people about how other people are uh, romantic fantasies fantasies around um, money money tends to be a big fantasy that people have Se sexual fantasies obviously is in there get really curious to to what that fantasy means like just just ask it the question like what why why do you why do you have this fantasy just ask it just get really curious what what do you want me to know about about you and fantasy is is often um, a coping mechanism so it's going back to that that third portal that we have here is a coping mechanism so get curious what why why this aspect of yourself is choosing to, to lie to you and it's probably because it's protecting one of these more vulnerable aspects of yourself these exiled parts that are right in the back of your consciousness in the in the what i call the the dark cupboard in the back of your head so get really curious the more you get curious and and the more that you're com compassionate with yourself when you do this work the more light and more awareness that you'll bring inside of yourself and the more truth the more truth that you'll that you'll unearth as well okay number seven deserves a video of its own um, but i will just briefly touch on it number seven is the dream realm so when we are going into um going to sleep we're, we're, we're going into our unconscious and our unconscious through dreams gives us gifts but it doesn't give us gifts in you know it doesn't speak literally it speaks in the in the language of symbols so if you can keeping a dream journal can really help you start to understand your inner world on a deeper level and understand things that you might not be able to um, address in your in your conscious waking state just a little bit of a tip if you're going to do some dream journaling i recommend they sell these this was given to me by a teacher so i'm going to pass on this this knowledge they sell these little pens on amazon and these little pens have night lights and when you're writing down your dreams um, if you go and turn the light on and if you um you know start to bring your con your consciousness starts to come online sometimes you can forget what you've actually dreamed about and if you if you have these little night lights you can keep the light off you can just jot it in a journal by your bed and you're not you're not kind of waking yourself up and also if you're somebody that kind of has a bit of disturbed sleep you don't have to disturb yourself anymore and you can try and get back to sleep 
I'd also say about, you know, when you go into sleep, something that I've started, I've been practicing this now for, for about a month, after doing a huge amount of, um, of shadow work the last couple of years, and I've clicked, I've, I've, you know, I've brought, not, not cleared my shadow, <laughs> you know, I'm not making that claim, but I've done a lot, I've done a lot of work, and I'm in a really solid, solid, um, energetic, spiritual, mental, emotional state right now, I'm, I'm in a really, really great place, and so one of the things that I've started to do, one of the practices that I've started to implement in my life is before I get, when I'm going to sleep, I'm trying to program my um, unconscious mind. So I'm trying to program it with um, what went well in the day, what could go better, and what would I like to bring in tomorrow. So I try to fall asleep with the thoughts of what do I want to bring in tomorrow so that when I'm in my waking state, I can manifest more of that. But if you are in a little bit of a um, you know, if you are going through a traumatic period or, you know, you've had some things come up in your life or some events that have been difficult to deal with, before you get to sleep, these things will, will come up. So just journal them and start to get curious with them and notice what comes up before you go to sleep because that's when the waking mind is starting to go into its unconscious state so it can give us some information, some real gifts. So I hope that was helpful. Those are the seven seven things to look out for when you are stalking your shadow. So I'll just go through them again. Number one, behaviors. Number two, agendas. Three, coping mechanisms and habits. Four, emotional and mental states. Five, projections and triggers. Number six is fantasies. And number seven is the dream realm. Thank you for your time and attention, your most precious resource in this reality. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any techniques that you think are great for shadow work or for this great awakening within, please share, also share those. I also have on my um, newsletter, I have a, a mini shadow guide. So if, if any of you are interested in getting that, I will leave a link to where you can subscribe to my newsletter. Okay, guys, I will leave it there for today and I will see you next week. Have a lovely week ahead. Take excellent care of yourself. It is an act of revolution to take care of yourself, especially in these times. So take good care of yourself and I will see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>